Speaker, and at the outset, I want to thank all of the members um, for their contributions, including the, the Minister of Health, for in responding uh, to this motion today. And without a doubt, this threat to Northern Ireland's medicine supply is an issue which should be debated openly and honestly. So I welcome the opportunity we have had to discuss this in the House today. I'm sure every one of us, when we're talking to constituents, say that one of our highest priorities, if not the highest priority, is health. Our health service, the jewel and the crown for our union, that free at the point of need service that we have all valued more than ever before of this last 12 months should always be a priority. For it is our health service that keeps us well and saves lives. Key to the success of our health service is of course access to medicines and to medical devices. In the United Kingdom, we benefit greatly from the very latest treatments. Cutting edge technology, all administered by our amazing frontline healthcare workers. Approximately 98% of medicines and medical products used in Northern Ireland are imported either from or via Great Britain. It is a life-saving supply chain. Yet due to the protocol, this free flow of medicines and medical devices is now under severe threat. Medicines moving from GB into Northern Ireland will be handled as though they are goods entering the EU from a third country. That means that medicines moving into Northern Ireland from GB will be subject to additional batch te testing and qualified person certification. From the 1st of January next year, when the grace period ends, all medicines used in Northern Ireland will have to, to comply with the EU's medicines directive that affects the packaging of medicines and the same, I will not, thank you, that affects the packaging of the medicines and the same requirements will not apply to products being mar marketed in GB. The fact that they even call it a grace period is an insult in itself. In relation to licensing, medicines in Northern Ireland must comply with the European licence and requirements set out by the European Medicines Agency, whilst those in Great Britain do not. For GB manufacturers who place medical devices on the Northern Ireland market, they must now appoint an EU or Northern Ireland based authorised representative. Having spoken with many suppliers in recent weeks, they testified to the intolerable levels of paperwork and bureaucracy issues with couriers and substantial increase in cost of doing business with the long-standing clients in Northern Ireland. Non-UK manufacturers are now required to appoint a UK responsible person or Northern Ireland. Um, I will. appreciate the member giving way. Um, I mean, uh, like I say, I, I don't dispute that there are issues that we need to dis address constructively. She mentioned the increase in paperwork. Would she accept that for anyone importing goods into GB from Europe, the enormous European market, which is from which a huge amount of medicines are imported into the UK, are also facing a huge increase in paperwork because that, unfortunately, is what Brexit is. Thank you, Member, for his intervention. Non-UK manufacturers are now required to appoint a UK responsible person or a Northern Ireland authorised person who, along with Northern Ireland manufacturers, must register devices with the NHRA before they are placed on the Northern Ireland market. Furthermore, medicines on a clinical trial will follow the EU regulation in NI but not in GB. For the times we are in and, and having benefited so greatly from the UK vaccination programme, it is significant that Northern Ireland will, allow, will follow EU regulations in relation to vaccines and Great Britain will not. While members of some parties want us to follow the European vaccine programme, I think once again we are better with the Union of the United Kingdom and not with the, with the European Union. Mr Deputy Speaker, the British Gener uh, Generic Manufacturers Association have made it clear that this intolerable and unsustainable position foisted upon us at the behest of the EU will prevent identical products being supplied to GB and NI, meaning businesses will have to duplicate resources and supply lines. I, I will not, thanks. Firms may need to build extra warehousing and hire more staff to ensure medicines comply with both EU and, and UK regulations, which simply isn't viable in the longer term. And given the small margins, this simply wouldn't be sustainable. And some GB manufacturers report that up to 90% of medicines could be at risk of being withdrawn. Sadly, Mr Deputy Speaker, the consequences of what the EU is demanding is likely to impact specialist illnesses particularly hard given that smaller quantities are needed and the cost of creating an NI-only pool of products would be prohibitive. It would also disrupt direct-to-patient uh, supply 
especially in respect of nutritional products such as gluten-free food, infant formula and some and personal home care products. This in addition to the threat to supply and choice available to local health and social care services. Access to clinical trials and exiting new development in the production of medicines, including vaccine supply, would be threatened and at the very least slowed down. Who amongst us, Mr Deputy Speaker, feels that this is the best deal, the best for health and well-being of those we represent? The rigorous implementation of the protocol, shamefully demanded by some local parties and the Irish Government, is damaging to the public health of everyone in Northern Ireland. It isn't an orange or green issue, it isn't a leave or remain issue, it affects everyone. And while some members opposite will no doubt seek to dismiss these issues, it is their cherished protocol that is driving, depriving lung cancer patients of the same chance of recovery as those in GB. Absolutely scandalous. I will not. No, thank you. And this is a stark example of how the EU and the Irish Government and others, even in this place, will stop at nothing to penalise the people of Northern Ireland. Mr Deputy Speaker, the invoking of Article 16 in January ended the facade that Northern Ireland is to be treated as a full and equal member of the EU single market. And as Brussels considers new exports controls on COVID-19 vaccine, there is no guarantee that our province will escape the fallout. Given the residual threat to domestic supply of medicines, this is one of the most telling examples of why best of both worlds is a dangerous myth. Given that there is already very little direct north-south trade in medicines because of different licensing regimes, there is minimal threat to the EU market or consumer. The reality is that while the protocol was championed on false pretenses, the issue of medicines and medical devices should never have been in the conversation in the first place. It is long overdue that EU and UK decouple public health from the protocol permanently. They should pursue a comprehensive mutual recognition agreement on medicines which takes the politics out of this and ensures the free flow of goods across our United Kingdom. The bottom line, the minimum requirement, is that medicines produced in Great Britain should be able to be legally used in Northern Ireland without additional barriers or hurdles. Quick fixes and tinkering at the edges of these problems will not cut the mustard. There needs to be meaningful and sustainable replacement to the protocol. It is time we all recognise the perilous implications for patients, our pharmacies and local health services moving forward. I ask all those who will go to the doors of constituents within the next 12 months to back up their claims, put, put health as a priority and to support this motion. Thank you.